So today we are going to discuss about the pharyngeal mucosal space. It is the space that is present in the innermost aspect of the neck spaces. And as we have discussed in the previous classes, it is a space that is present somewhere in this aspect, which is medial to the parapharyngeal space. And it is medial to the, the masseteric space, the masticator space. It is present uh, anterior to the retropharyngeal space. So it is the medial most space that we will be seeing. Now, if you see one aspect of this, it is not completely covered by the fascia. So normally any neck space it is completely covered by fascia but this space is covered by fascia only in its uh, outer aspect whereas in the inner aspect it is just lined by the mucosal uh, layer. So it is not exactly a space but it is considered as a space just to complete the neck spaces so that any lesion coming here can be put into a pharyngeal mucosal space. Now this pharyngeal mucosal space on the outer aspect it's lined by the the middle layer of deep cervical fascia. It is lined by the middle layer of the deep cervical fascia. And now this will be the outer aspect, whereas the inner aspect it is lined by the mucosa of the pharynx. Okay. And it extends from the skull base, it extends from the skull base downwards as the nasopharynx and then from there it continues downwards from the level of the, the, the heart and soft palate downwards it continues as oropharynx and then below it will be continues as hypopharynx. The posterior wall in the uppermost aspect from the skull base, it is lined by a membrane that is called pharyngobasilar membrane, which attaches to superior constrictor, which continues down as the middle and inferior constrictor muscles. So this will be the posterior and the lateral wall of the, the pharynx, which will be the content of this pharyngeal mucosal space. Now, the next thing that we have to understand is the attachment on the skull base. On the skull base, it is attached to this part. This is nothing called the basis sphenoid. It's just if you if you break it and go inside, it will be the sphenoid sinus. What we'll get, and this is nothing but the basi occiput part of the clivus, the anterior part of the clivus, anterior superior part of the clivus, or the the basi occiput is what it is called as. And if you see on the lateral aspect of this basi occiput, we can see that there is a small foramen. This is nothing but a foramen lacera, which is usually covered by a cartilage. Now, whenever this is the carotid canal, the carotid foramen, now through which the carotid artery enters and the carotid canal is a siphon in a S formation. Now that carotid artery will be coming and it will be lying on this foramen lacera which is covered by a cartilage. Now whenever there is a tumor of the, the, uh, the pharyngeal mucosal space, now that can enter into the cranial cavity through this cartilage. By breaking this cartilage, it can enter into the cranial cavity is what we have to understand. And laterally, we have this masticator space and posterior laterally, we have this carotid space and the posterior laterally, we also have this parapharyngeal space. And here there is the parotid space, which is far lateral aspect. Now, this is the relation of the other spaces to the pharyngeal mucosal space. Now, from here, there will be the attachment of pharyngobasilar membrane, which will be attaching on the, the skull base and then it will come down and it will attach itself to the superior constrictor, which forms the posterior wall of the pharynx. Okay. Now, this is the, the, the nasopharynx that, that we are seeing. And uh, this is the... Uh, the right and left nasal cavity uh, that we are seeing and if you see here this is a this is from anterior to this is a nasal cavity and posterior to this it is the, the nasopharynx now here outermost layer is nothing but the middle layer of the deep cervical fascia is what we are seeing here and deeper to that as i told there is the superior constrictor muscle and if you go higher up higher up towards the cranial aspect, it will continue as a pharyngobasilar membrane. And in the lateral aspect, we have this muscle. This is nothing but the levator belly palatini muscle. And this is the torus tuberus, which is formed by this eustachian tube. And this is the opening of the eustachian tube. And this lateral aspect of the nasopharynx, it forms a recess. Now, this is called as the lateral recess of the nasopharynx. Now, the lateral recess of the nasopharynx is the place where the eustachian tube comes out as torus tuberus. And also, that is where the opening of the eustachian tube is present and that's where even the levator villi palatini muscle present and more laterally and anteriorly we have the, the tensor villi palatini muscle. Okay, so these are the structures that we see in the pharyngeal mucosal space. Now, if you see this image, this is nothing but the torus tuberus which, and this is the opening of the eustachian tube and this is the lateral recess that has been collapsed and uh, this is how the, the picture we can see in an MRI. Now, this is the image of an oropharynx. Here again, we can see the posterior part of the tongue and the posterior wall of the oropharynx is what constitutes the pharyngeal mucosal space. And again, we can see here it is lined by this uh, 
the middle layer of deep cervical fascia which is responsible uh, which is a posterior border or posterior lateral border of the pharyngeal mucosal space and here we can see this is nothing but a palatoglossus muscle the muscle that is attaching the palate to the tongue and it forms an anterior uh, the tonsillar pillar similarly palatopharyngeal muscle forms a posterior tonsillar pillar and in between is the the palatine tonsil and on the surface of the tongue there will be lingual tonsil and on the superior aspect, on the roof of the nasopharynx, it will be adenoid tonsil. So these are the lymphatic structures that are present in this area. Now, after seeing this, again, if you go see the MRI, we can see here, this is the palatine tonsil that we are seeing here. And here, this will be the, the superior constrictor, which is covering the posterior aspect. And here is uh, uh, the, uh, the palatopharyngeus muscle, which is forming the posterior tonsillar pillar. Now, these are the structures that we see in an MRI which is corresponding to the image that we saw before. Also, understand that this parapharyngeal space is extending along the lateral aspect of this pharyngeal, uh, pharyngeal mucosal space and it is uh, the, the main structure that is present in the lateral relation to this space. Now, this is again the coronal image like how we saw there. We can see here, this is the torus tuberus. This is the, the, the lateral recess of the uh, the, uh, the pharyngeal mucosal space. Now, this becomes very important is because a lot of lesion in the nasopharynx arise from this uh, this lateral recess and this is the nasopharynx that we are seeing. This will be the oropharynx of area. Now most of the lesion here arises from this lateral recess whereas in the oropharynx most of the lesion comes from the tonsillar bed. That's where most of the, the infectious process, the tumors in the oropharynx arise. So this structure becomes important because of this reason. Now this is how whenever there is a lesion, whenever there is a tumor in this region, it will in, in this pharyngeal mucosal space, it extends on the medial aspect into the pharynx, nasopharynx or oropharynx and laterally it will, it will push the parapharyngeal space, laterally it push the carotid space, laterally and it pushes the masticator space as well into the lateral aspect and uh, anteriorly the masticator space and carotid space posterior laterally. Okay, so this is how the various structures are in relation to the pharyngeal, pharyngeal, uh, pharyngeal mucosal space. Now, why this becomes important? Because the, knowing the pharyngeal mucosal space because it's important because of the internal structure that are present. It contains mucosal lining. It contains lymphatic ring like adenoid tonsil on the roof, palatine tonsil on the lateral aspect and lingual tonsil on the tongue and submucosal minor salivary glands are present. So, mucosal layer can uh, come up with squamous cell carcinoma which is one of the most common lesion in this region and these tonsils can develop lymphoma can affect here or hyperplasia of any of these tonsils in children can be a problematic condition and submucosal salivary glands can give rise to tumors like a benign mixed tumor or pleomorphic adenoma. So this is why it becomes important. Now what are the lesions that we are going to study now in this space mainly we will be seeing congenital lesion that is a torn walled cyst and then we will see some infectious lesions like retention cyst and some inflammatory conditions like tonsillar inflammation, infections like ton tonsillar or peritonsillar abscess and some Tumors like benign mixed tumors, pleomorphic adenoma of the pharyngeal mucosal space and minor salivary gland malignancies and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So these are the lesions that we are going to discuss in our next few classes. Thank you.